the entrance antiphon itself, the, the shepherds went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Today we remember Jan Alt in this Mass, and today as we celebrate this octave between Christmas itself and then Mary, Mother of God, we honor the Holy Family. So as Jesus is born for us, we remember that he was not uh, born, he did not enter into the world in isolation, but came through a family, uh, claiming Mary and Joseph, uh, being entrusted to their care. Uh, and so in this way, we can honor all together Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, filled with love for one another. And so confident in the example that we see in the Holy Family, let us begin by acknowledging our sins and asking for the Lord's forgiveness. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We proclaim together, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who are pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them, and in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity, and so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Hannah conceived, and at the end of her term bore a son, whom she called Samuel, since she had asked the Lord for him. The next time her husband, Elkanah, was going up with the rest of his household to offer the customary sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vows. Hannah did not go explaining to her husband, Once the child is weaned, I will take him to appear before the Lord and to remain there forever, and I will offer him a perpetual Nazarite. Once Samuel was weaned, Hannah brought him up with her, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephod of flour, and a skin of wine, and presented him at the table of the Lord in Shiloh. After the boy's father had sacrificed the young bull, Hannah, his mother, approached Eli and said, Pardon, my Lord, as you live, my Lord. I am the woman who stood near you here, praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord granted my request. Now I, in turn, give him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be dedicated to the Lord. Hannah left Samuel there. The word of the Lord. Blessed are they who dwell in the house, O Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Happy they who dwell in your house. Continually they praise you. Happy the men whose strength you are. Their hearts are set upon the pilgrimage. O 
O Lord of hosts, hear our prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. O God, behold your shield and look upon the face of your anointed. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God, and so we are. The reason the Lord does not know us is that we did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it was revealed, we shall be like Him for we shall see him as he is. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him, and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us, the word of the Lord. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord, Lord. Each year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to the festival custom. After they had completed its days, as they were returning, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem, but his parents didn't know it. Thinking that he was in the caravan, they journeyed for a day and looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances, but not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them, and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. He went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus advanced in wisdom and age and favor before God and man. The Gospel of the Lord. The Gospel today is that fifth joyful mystery, and we hear about the finding in the temple how Jesus remained behind and uh, stayed in the temple while Mary and Joseph were looking for him. So for three days he appeared to be lost, then they found him there, and then we get that question. He says, why did you do this? This is the, the question that the parents, that Mary and Joseph then ask, 
Why have you done this to us? Because we've been looking for you with great anxiety. And I don't know if this, uh, maybe you've kind of ever had this thought about that passage. It's if we were to think about any parents today, if we think about if your children, especially your teenage children, as soon as I say teenage, right, you start to think about, you know, teenagers think they know everything, right? So, that's the, uh, so you might kind of think, there does seem to be something that almost seems a little, almost disrespectful. I, I hesitate to even say that. But uh, there does seem to be something that if, it, if we were to, to translate into a present situation, a parent, parents might be quite upset at their children uh, if they had somehow wandered off or, or gotten lost or, um, because it caused them distress. And so parents would be upset about that. So this really does give us something to think about because we, we know that Jesus himself is sinless. So there's no sin here, but it is really a remarkable thing to consider. Um, because normally we think about that sense of being obedient to one's uh, parents. And we are told that Jesus was obedient to them. He, he uh, went down to Nazareth, was obedient to them, while Mary kept all these things in her heart. But there is also a sense in which Jesus is obedient, not just to his earthly father, to Joseph, or his earthly mother, to Mary, but also to his heavenly father. And we remember that this is the reason for which Jesus came. It's a little foreshadowing, I think, here, as Jesus would have to go about his public ministry, and this would lead him back to the temple and that uh, Mary would lose him once again for three days. We think about the three days that Jesus would be in the tomb, not just the three days in the finding of the temple in which she was looking for him. So there was another calling that Jesus would have, and this is something that he would want to embrace. But see, here's part of, I think, the, the, um, the deeper sense of this. So when we think about what the Blessed Mother did, the Blessed Mother promised her obedience to the Father as well. Remember that when she received a special vocation, she responded to the Archangel Gabriel by saying that she was the handmaid of the Lord. So she was ready to do whatever the Lord wished. So Mary wants what God the Father wants. And Jesus wants what God the Father wants. Mary might not completely know exactly how this vocation is to unfold, and this is something where she is learning as she's watching her son, and as she's coming to understand this more and more. But it's not as though Jesus and Mary, it's not as though their wills were somehow against one another. No, in many ways you can say that Jesus and Mary were united by a common desire to serve God the Father. That was the one, that's this common element. And if there's any um, anxiety present, it would just simply because it'd be because there is the uh, opportunity to grow in understanding. So Mary doesn't yet understand. She's growing in understanding, just as Jesus also advances in wisdom, in age, and in favor. One of the things that we know about the Blessed Mother is that she um, could refer back to the Old Testament and she was immersed in, in um, aspects of the scriptures. Um, if you remember Mary's famous Magnificat, when she makes that great statement of praise, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, her Magnificat was reflecting some themes that were present in another canticle in the Old Testament, the canticle of Hannah. This is the Hannah that we heard about in the first reading. Hannah, who was the mother of Samuel, and her story is told that the, in 1 Samuel, if we go back to the Old Testament, and when she, who was barren, conceived and then was able to bear a child, she has her canticle of praise, and there are wonderful themes in that that talk about the majesty and the providence of God, and the Blessed Mother repeats many of those things in her canticle and her Magnificat. So we know for sure that Mary was aware of the story of Hannah. Part of that story was told in the first reading today. And what happened with Hannah when she received a child, uh, when her prayer was answered, when she who was thought to be barren conceived, she then offered this son up to the Lord. So she was going to hand over Samuel to the Lord, and this is what we hear about in the first reading today. Once Samuel was weaned, then Hannah brought Samuel along with an offering. Um, that offering was made, and then the woman presented her child for temple service. So oddly enough, Hannah was ready to surrender Samuel at a very young age to stay in the temple forever, to, to abide in the temple. Perhaps Mary would think about this passage, saying that, so isn't that interesting, Jesus found himself in the temple. Well, Hannah was ready to let Samuel go, and so this might be a thought that Mary would have, that this might be the moment at which uh, she has to be ready to let her son go. And in fact, she knew that was going to happen. She knew that this was the Messiah and that Jesus would have a mission to fulfill. And really, like all parents have to deal with their children, they have to recognize that the time comes at which then they go forth. So a parent's job is really to prepare their children so that way they, when they become adults, that they will be best prepared, best ready um, to do what they are called to do, to be ready to serve the Lord. 
Um, one of the things that we hear, and this is a beautiful sentiment in the second reading today, this letter of St. John, is to see the love that the Father has on us, bestowed on us in calling us children of God. Because every one of us, especially by baptism, is also called a child of God. So we have a Heavenly Father to serve as well. So part of our task, part of our duty, is to serve our Father, our Heavenly Father. When we talk about uh, obedience to parents, children are expected to obey their parents, and that's captured in the commandment, honor thy father and mother. But it's interesting, it says honor thy father and mother. Children are expected to be obedient while they are children, but, and, but the thing is, the time comes at which they become adults, and so they no longer have to obey in the same sense, but they always have to honor. That's an important aspect of that commandment, that we, even as adults, adults should always honor their children. But our Heavenly Father, no matter how old we are, we always have to continue to obey. Let us continue to obey the Father. And how is that done? That is something that is revealed to us. He says, Beloved, we are God's children, but what we shall be has not yet been revealed. And this is something that will be revealed in time, at the end of time, when we go to be with the Lord forever. Then there's a glory that we will experience of being children of God. But even as children grow up, so what is it that they are to be? You ever hear that question? People say, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I say, well, maybe the better question is, what does God want you to be when you grow up? That's actually a better way to put that question. Because that, too, is something that is revealed in time, just as... Mary was coming to contemplate and to understand more and more who Jesus was to become, the role that he would perform. So also each of us in learning about our vocations also have to discern that will. And so how is it that we do that? Well, we do that by keeping his commandments, by being obedient. But this is the interesting thing that John also brings out, is that obedience to his commandments is this, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ. So obedience leads us to faith. So how is it that we know what we should do? Obey God, and God tells us this, have faith in Jesus Christ and love one another. We might say that maybe a better way to state this commandment is not that you shall obey. Remember, the, the great commandment that we are told to obey is the commandment to love. So rather than maybe just saying, here, obey me, he says, well, how about this? How about love me? How about the, uh, that God asks us to love him. So the way in which we respond to that vocation is by growing in love. That is really what all of us are called to do. And that leads us to spend our lives in a way in which we give from what we have and, and actually focus more on others and enrich others rather than ourselves. This is, I think, the great calling all of us have in discerning our vocations, and figuring out how the Lord wants us to love, to put into practice that commandment of love. And especially today for the Feast of the Holy Family, this is part of the great uh, dignity that parents have is that part of your job then is to teach your children to learn how best to love. It's really a, a wonderful, it's an admirable vocation. It's a wonderful thing for parents to be called to do. So as Mary and Joseph were entrusted with the care of Jesus Christ as an infant, um, and as he grew up, as he learned from his parents, as we know he did, so they taught him that lesson of love, and that Jesus grew in love for them as they grew in love for him. So let us then also, parents, but then parents with respect to their children, but all of us with respect to our Heavenly Father, let us learn to love God, to have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, to do what we can in the to the best of our ability to serve Him. Let us stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us present our prayers and petitions. For the family of the church, that we may give respect and dignity to all God's children, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family of people and nations, that the rights of the old and the young will be upheld for the sake of peace, justice, and harmony. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our families, that those separated from their family circle may find a home with God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For broken families, that God's reconciling forgiveness will be granted and accepted to restore all relationships of love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends and all the departed, that they may be gathered into the eternal joy of their heavenly home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the protection of our religious liberties as we say, St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Almighty and merciful God, hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, and Louis, his assistant Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gather here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living in truth. Celebrating the most sacred day on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. 
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs. With John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And I don't know if we have one or even two extraordinary ministers. Thank <laughs> you. 
Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world we may share their company forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements, so we continue to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas. So thank you for being here as we honor not just our Lord, born for us, but also the Blessed Mother and St. Joseph. So may they watch over all of your lives as well uh, this day. And calling upon the intercession of the Blessed Mother, let us pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Uh, we do thank you for your support of St. Thomas Parish and School through the contributions left in the purple baskets. Uh, so thank you for that generosity that continues to sustain us. And let us also pray for those who are not able to be with us, for those taking communion to the homebound. Almighty God, bless those who carry the body of Christ to our absent brothers and sisters. May this sacrament and our union of prayer be a source of strength for them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.